Now you have a friend in the paper business. We're at the Vintage Vault Arcade and today we'll be talking about Atari's Paperboy. This game was released in 1985 and it was an instant hit. For those who remember Paperboy, it's unique handlebar controllers that sets it apart from other games. And what's not to like about this game? You're a paperboy delivering newspapers to a suburban neighborhood just doing your best to survive to the end of the week. From its high detail graphics to its rocking soundtrack and a whole lot of cowbell, this is just one of those games you couldn't pass up playing back in the day. The year was 1985 and Paperboy just hit the arcades. You walk into your local arcade surveying all the different games available to play, all the while looking for any new games that may have just come out. You're sizing up which game to play first going down each row. Joystick, 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 trackball. Wait a second. Handlebars? Now as a 13 year old boy before the days of the internet, satellite TV, and 24 hour cartoon network, you spent a lot of your time riding your bicycle around the neighborhood with your friends. This was the mode of transportation back in the day. Now here we have a brand new game in the arcade with bicycle handlebars. This is familiar to me. Oh, this is gonna be good. I gotta try this. Paperboy soon became an arcade favorite. Now here is a bit of Paperboy trivia for you. Paperboy was released in 1985, but if you look in some places on the internet, it shows a date of 1984. So which is it? Was it 1984 or was it 1985? Actually, 1984 was the year Paperboy was developed and field tested, but was not yet in the arcades. The title marquee for Paperboy, as well as the game screen, will both show this date. After successful earnings and field tests, Atari then made the decision to produce the game. They began taking orders at the Amusement Showcase International Show in March of 1985, with the release date of April 1985. Internal memos show 3,442 paperboys made, with a sale price of $2,495 each. I also have the first printing of the official operator's manual for Paperboy. On the inside, it says Copyright 1985 by Atari Games Corporation. This is the manual that would have come with every purchase of a brand new Paperboy arcade game. This game features a newly designed medium resolution monitor which was developed and first used in Paperboy. This allowed for a higher level of graphic detail which had not been previously seen in any video game. Compared to today's high definition graphics, it pales in comparison but back in 1984, this was groundbreaking for the time. Now the gameplay is laid out with a pseudo 3D isometric view, similar to Sega's hit, Zaxxon. The 45 degree view allowed for maximum viewing of the houses in the neighborhood. At the beginning of each game, you're given three difficulty level choices, easy street, middle road, and hard way. The object of the game is to deliver papers to subscribers for an entire week while avoiding crashing and other obstacles. You throw a newspaper either directly into their mailbox or you hit their front door with a newspaper. The game lasts for seven days of the week, Monday through Sunday. At the end of each day, you have a bonus round called the training course. Now for each day of the week, you get more and more obstacles in your way, as well as new characters and objects, which will prevent you from delivering papers. From rolling tires to break dancers, skateboarders, Angry Cats, and much, much more will all try to take out your friendly neighborhood paper boy. The one thing that everyone remembers about Paper Boy is the unique handlebar setup. Once again, you can mimic the gameplay in MAME, but it's just not the same without those bicycle handlebars. Strangely enough, Paper Boy's handlebar design was copied off another Atari hit and favorite of mine, Star Wars. The mechanical controls from the Star Wars flight stick was redesigned for use with those unique bicycle handlebars. Atari certainly knew how to innovate. 
Now Paperboy has an amazing stereo sound system, making this game a complete package. There are two Pokey chips for digital sound, a Yamaha synthesizer chip for theme music, and a Texas Instruments speech synthesizer chip for digitized voices. Plus, there's Cowbell. A whole lot of Cowbell. Now for this game, I've had to do very little as far as maintenance. When I first got the game, I had to replace an audio amp chip on the AR3 board because one of the sound channels was out. I've done a basic cap kit on the monitor to freshen up the image. At some point, I had to change out some bad video RAM, and I've also replaced the potentiometers and the handlebars, since they get sticky and worn with time. Other than that, this game has been rock solid. Now enough with the review, let's play this game. You may not like the news, but you have to admire the person who delivers it. Paperboy.
glasses. That's it for Paperboy. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see me review more games in the arcade, make sure you like it on YouTube. You can also see more arcade goodness at thebasementarcade.com. Link will also be in the description. Until next time, keep on gaming.